Welcome to the Ministry's Papers. Today we're going to talk about painting up the charnel throne. The Charnel Throne. So this is just a terrain piece. For those that don't know, it comes at AOS. Uh, you buy it a little separately. You have bonus terrain rules for your army with these terrain sets that are coming out with the new releases for all the AOS factions that they're having. This one is for the Flesh Eater Quartz. And since I'm doing a Flesh Eater Quartz army, then um, I went ahead and just picked it up because I thought actually it looked pretty cool. So you don't see too many things for the Flesh Eater Quartz. A lot of people bang up the Flesh Eater Quartz because they don't have a lot of hero named characters within their units. But I think that kind of opens it up to you building the narrative how you want it and giving them, you know, different kind of abilities and stuff like that that you want. So it's like ultimately custom customizable, which is really cool because I can create a narrative for it and gearing up for the Nova Open next year, I want to have this army complete and ready to go and table. Um, so this way I can experience AOS on a larger faction. So one of the things that I have to do is terrain piece, and this would look cool even if it was just in the background scenery when I take my shots for my showcase videos. All right, so this is a great piece uh, it's going to look great in that showcase, it's going to look great on the field, and it's going to have actual rules to it. Now, this was a fun model to paint. At first I thought, oh man, I'm just going to blaze on through it and it'll take just no time whatsoever. I'm not going to care about it, I'm just going to paint it up, it's scenery, it's not a big deal, yeah, but then it's me, and I got really into it. And actually it's really, really cool. I, you know, I never really realized how complex the bottom pieces are there. Um, with all the leftover bits and stuff like that, that the um, crash eater quartz were, you know, just refuse and littering, I guess. I, I, maybe I'll, I should give them a ticket for littering. I mean, flesh eater quartz guys, why are you littering for? It, it's not good for the environment. You're not being positive role models. Then again, being cannibals. Hmm. Hmm. Now, enough of me blabbering. Let's get on to the tutorial. Alrighty, so let's get started with the flesh eater quartz charnel throne. Let's see, from box to built. Just like that. Okay, Steinal Red Primer uh, is the first up. I do that for the bone pieces uh, itself, uh, just so I can have a lighter tone, easier to put that bone white onto it later on. Next up, we're going to uh, do some black Steinal Res Primer. The thing that I love about black Steinal Res Primer, or even Steinal Res Primer as a whole, is that you could overspray it just a little. You can, you can it start. You can start spraying it to the point where you think it's got an orange peel, but the thing about it, it's formulated to lay flat. In other words, it spreads out evenly as a paint, and I, I love that quality about it because I could be a little reckless with it, not too much. Next up, Gray Steinal Res Primer. Um, I just wanted to do some highlights, and I was just kind of using what was on my table. Like, I didn't even turn around and get any of the other paints. And what was on my table was Gray Steinal Res Primer. So, yeah, I said, you know, why not? And what we're doing is we're doing the undershading, a lot of uh, the undercoating for this stuff. And it's really important to, to have that understating because later on throughout the process, you, you kind of want the items to really stand out, the bricks to really stand out. And creating this type of glow effect definitely brings out that pop, that contrast you want, especially if you're just, you know, painting something gray. A lot of people just gray and dry brush, but this will take your painting to the next level. Somber gray now. Somber gray from Vallejo Game Color is a blue, a very blue gray. And it's no surprise if you've ever seen any of my uh, previous videos that I am a huge fan of space wolves. I love blue and a lot of people don't like the eggshell blue, but you know, I don't know. I kind of like it. Why not? You know, <laughs> I went for it. I fell in love with the army the way it was on the box. So, you know, uh, my grays tend to be cold or, or have a little bit of blue in them. Uh, continuing on to that bluish gray, and I'm going to hit the other panels as well. 
So the Charnel Throne, man, this thing was really awesome to get painted. Like it, it really was enjoyable. At first I was like, oh, it's terrain. And I'm, I was kind of iffy on it. I didn't know how I was going to experience this as a whole. And the experience of painting it was actually pretty cool uh, because, you know, it's it surprised me because I didn't think there would be so many interesting details in it that I would actually be interested in. Like, oh, it's just a piece of terrain. But no, there's, there's so many little details here to pick out that uh, at first, I wanted to paint this uh, in a fashion where it was just thrown together, dry brush, it's terrain, I don't care. But then I wanted to actually take my time with it as I started painting it. As you can see with the stairs, now when I hit the somber gray with this, I, I try to hit the middles of the stairs like I'm trying to hit the middle of these uh, bricks. Now this is the same technique that I use when I did my flagstone brick, um, my flagstone tutorial where I'm hitting the center of the bricks and the best way to get more control and more accuracy with your airbrush is this this practice right here hitting and trying to hit one brick and the more you do it the more you get control of the accuracy of where you're putting the paint onto uh, a miniature and everything else and terrain is a great way i mean really great way to get started to practicing your accuracy with an airbrush so i always use this as an opportunity to just to increase my accuracy and skills with an airbrush all right moving away from somber gray i'm going to a bone white from vallejo game air and what i'm going to do is um i'm gonna vallejo white uh, from Game Air, and what I'm doing is bringing up these bones, and I'm just trying to highlight the bones. You're, and it's barely hitting it, you hardly know the difference right now. I'm just blocking in some colors with that and trying to get it bony. Now, um, white. Now, I like Dalarani's uh, ink because it doesn't sputter, it's not thick, it's, it really flows out well, and you can use it to feather the edges of things. Like, you really just precisely bring it around, and you see what I'm doing there, it's the somber gray with, with that white, and I'm just going around the edges of it, subtly blending out, and you're gonna see it highlight in the middle and blending out darker towards the end, and that's exactly the effect that I want. And inks are masterful when it comes to creating those smooth transitions, those smooth blends. If you were painting with just paint, you notice that the paint is sputtering and it has that airbrush speckled kind of look going on. There's two things you can do, dilute even more, and smooth out the paint. Um, use some flow improver to help you out with that um, in through the airbrush, but you can also use inks. Inks are really good at creating smooth, smooth transition, provided you dilute it appropriately. And appropriately diluting, it just depends on the person, the milky white consistency is always the standard to go by. But honestly, it just use the back of your hands. See, I have a black uh, glove there, and you can see the speckles on the glove. If you're shooting your hand with a glove on it, and you can notice those speckles, especially with the back black background, um, then you know that it's not diluted enough. And if you keep on going until you see a really smooth transition on the glove itself, then you go over to the miniature, and then you apply that same smooth transition onto the miniature miniature, guaranteeing you that you'll have a smooth transition on your final product. So this is a step that you should, I advise you to take. Always practice on your gloved hand first to see how it's going to come out on the final product. Okay, moving around with the same exact mixture. So sort of my batch painting, right? I'm going through different sub-assemblies, hitting the same color. And what I'm doing is I'm bringing in the, uh, the same colors to that broken kind of tile that's on the upper level and this is broken on the bottom so the tile that's on the above level is actually on the bottom level but it's kind of broken and shattered into a lot of bits so i'm just trying to get in there again using that accuracy that i practice with the flagstones that i practice with the bricks i'm using the same one just to target a certain area just to bring it up again this takes practice and if you're not practicing it you're not going to get better at it so you have to practice it in order to get more accuracy with your airbrush. In fact, I'm thinking, I'm just toying around with the idea 
of getting a class possibly in the Nova open uh, and all proceeds go to charity um, and just to, to get gain accuracy with an airbrush like about basic 101 airbrushing tutorial or class uh, where I am teaching how to improve your accuracy and you know I'll bring in miniatures and stuff like that and say paint just one area in particular and get better at painting that one area. Also, I'll have like a, a sheet, like a, I guess like a, a course that you have to do and hit certain things like learning techniques with the airbrush itself. I think that would be a neat idea. Again, now bringing up and what I'm doing here is I'm hitting not every brick with the lighter color, but like every other brick or so, adding variation to these stones. I think that's really important to add variation to the stones. Ivory black is next. This is a Windsor and Newton um, it's a wash it's an oil wash and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my my pieces and yeah they do have some transition but the contrast for me personally was not enough now oil washes oil washes are if you do not have this in your toolkit add this to your toolkit um, what I mean by that is add it to your painting repertoire. And this is where I take an actual oil paint and I take uh, mineral uh, spirits and odorless mineral spirits, uh, white spirits, they're called the artist spirits, uh, to dilute that. And I'm washing the entire miniature. You see how glossy that is? Oil washes tend to be glossy. You can solve this issue by just heating it with some matte varnish later on. But when I say later on, I'm talking about 24 to 48 hours later on because this is the downside see how easy it is to fill in all the cracks and crevices when it comes to the oil uh, wash now what you may want to do for this is to varnish it before you add the oil wash to it some people varnish with uh, a gloss coat I don't I, I varnished with a, a matte coat for this one just to protect your paint job underneath because it's like a save spot like a save area where you varnished it it's like okay underneath the varnish it's not gonna get ruined so you can paint it on top of it and even if you make a mistake I mean you still have the varnish layer and you can take this off with mineral spirits another thing working with uh, with oil paint is that later on if you have some blotchiness you can always get some mineral spirits or white spirits and go back and erase literally erase the areas that you overdone and just leave the recesses alone because you can activate it much later on just make sure you leave 48 uh 24 to 48 hours dry time with this stuff because oil paints take a long time to dry it's the only downside with oil washes and using oil paints bone white is next and i'm going to get that white area and i'm just basically just covering the entire thing with a bone white uh, and just to add that that warmness to those bones in the throne really fun painting the throne piece now that i did all those uh steps with the actual steps <laughs> and the bottom pieces now van dyke brian and brown another oil wash there's a lot of crevices in here this uh channel throne lends itself to a lot of washing and if you're gonna wash i always tend to wash with oil washes i think they're just more efficient to going into the recesses it doesn't dye or tint the color on top i think it does a better job of washing than the the citadel washes and other kind of washes that kind of like the strong tones and stuff like that because it dyes everything that color or a tint of that color the oil washes tend to go into the recesses only you can see it for yourself i'm just globbing it on and it's just finding its way into those recesses it's just finding its way into those crevices and really bringing out everything else and if you again if you overdo it you can always go back with some white spirits and clean it up uh anything that you overdo but look how easy easy it is look how dark it becomes agrax earthshade is next now it looked a bit a little too plain and i would kind of frame i wanted to frame that shield there in the front right there so i just took some agrax earthshade and make darker bones straight around and i was just painting the, the bones straight around uh to get that effect but that's it this is all i kind of did it's some blood spattering with the blood of the blood god uh you could do that or i use uh tamaya to me is uh clear red and then you take a toothbrush and then spark it on but you don't have to even do that blood if you don't want to the blood effects but you're going to see in the pictures um most of this came out super well it was super easy to paint up and you know i hope you find yourself one uh as well this was a joy let's check out the pictures
Well, there it is, all painted up and ready for the gaming table. Well, if you found this tutorial helpful, and if you like this video, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on Adventures Paper. Oh, 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 oh,